greetings to all in this video we are going to see about seepage seepage is nothing but the movement of water through the soil under a hydraulic gradient this is called seepage a hydraulic gradient is supposed to exist between two points if there is a exist a difference in the hydraulic head at the two points the seepage of water will pose some problems like loss of stored water through an earth dam or foundation settlement of structures that are constructed on a compressible soils due to consolidation effect instability for soil slopes forces on hydraulic structures due to the pressure exerted by the percolating water these are the problems caused due to the seepage of water for the studying the seepage forces the laplace equation is best suited for this kind of seepage forces next we are going to see the flow lines the flow lines are nothing but the set of curves represent the trajectories of the seepage the space between the two adjacent flow lines is assumed to be flow channel with an impervious boundary at both ends such that the water does not cross the flow lines next we are going to see equipotential lines these these are the set of curves represents the lines of equal head the head loss caused by a water crossing two adjacent equipotential lines is termed as the potential head next we are going to see flow net flow net is nothing but the entire pattern of flow lines and equipotent lines is referred to as flow net thus a flow net is a graphical representation of head and direction of seepage at every point next we are going to see the properties of flow net first one equipotential and flow lines intersects or meet orthogonally second one the potential drop between any two adjacent equipotent lines is the same third one the quantity of water flowing through two adjacent flow channels is the same fourth one velocity of flow is more in small size fig square figures so as to keep the discharge same these are the four properties of flow net next we are going to see the applications of flow net there are four applications of flow net are there number 1 quantity of seepage water number 2 amount of seepage pressure number 3 amount of uplift pressure number 4 exit gradient so first we will see quantity of seepage water the quantity of seepage water is nothing but the total discharge through the complete flow net per unit length and it can be calculated by the equation of q equal to kh into n f divided by n d where n f is the number of flow channels and n d is the number of potential drops h is the total head loss the ratio of n f divided by n d is also called as shape factor of the flow net so the quantity of seepage water can be calculated by using a formula of q equal to k h into n f divided by n d next we are going to see amount of seepage pressure this can be calculated by a formula of seepage pressure is equal to h minus nd into del h into gamma w where nd is the number of potential drops by the value of del h in this in this type the seepage pressure acts in the direction of flow Our gamma W is the unit weight of water. Next, we are going to see amount of uplift pressure. So, uplift pressure is nothing but it is H W into gamma W, where H W is the piezometric head. Next, we are going to see exit gradient. Exit gradient is nothing but the maximum hydraulic gradient at downstream end flow of lines is termed as the exit gradients in other words it is the hydraulic gradient where the percolating water leaves the soil moss and emerges into free water the exit gradient is given by ie equal to del h divided by l where del h is the 
head loss over the lost field and L is the length of smallest square in the lost field. Next we are going to see the quick condition. When water flows upwards in soil at a certain hydraulic gradient, the upward forces neutralizes the downward gravitational forces. This particular gradient of flow is called critical hydraulic gradient. The critical hydraulic gradient is given by the equation of ICR equal to G minus 1 divided by I plus E. Whereas saturated sorry submerged unit weight of soil is equal to G minus 1 divided by 1 plus E into gamma W. So gamma sub divided by gamma W equal to G minus 1 divided by 1 plus E. Therefore, ICR equal to G minus 1 divided by 1 plus E. Therefore, gamma sub divided by gamma W is always equal to 1. So, the value of critical hydraulic gradient is approximately is equal to the unity. This means that an upward hydraulic gradient of magnitude ICR will be just sufficient to start the phenomenon of boiling in sand. The quick condition flow will be occurring in the upward direction under critical hydraulic gradient and soil loses its effective stress. This is called quick quicksand condition. The shear strength of all soils is a function of effective stress. Some soils lose their shear strength when effective stress reduces to zero. In such soils, the quick condition is uh, dangerous because that soil can no longer support anything. And also the quicksand is a type of hydraulic condition and not a type of sand and many soil can become quick. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe our channel for more videos. Thank you.